Hey everyone, it's Dossi from First Up This Now at the Houston uh, State Championship. Here at 5431 Titan Robotics, my former high school team. Uh, today we're with Brian, Ido, and Colin, and we're we'll be talking about their amazing robot that they have made multiple iterations at, in the, uh, from previous competitions. And also they have a Woody Flowers uh, semi-finalist, which I'm happy about. And yeah, we'll get over their robot on here behind the bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. First Updates Now is supported by Stryker Careers. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. If you are planning on attending the World Championship, come meet others in the fun and FRC Discord community with our combined meetup on Friday, April 22nd at 11 a.m. local. Location will be announced closer to the event, and you can stay updated by following in either the fun or FRC Discord. Now, to first off, with a robot, uh, Brian, we'll start with you. Uh, it seems like you've been doing, you guys are doing Swerve, really interesting intake, so why don't you talk about that with us? Yeah, so let me just walk you through just the basic design process of our robot. So we started off with the basics. We wanted from the get-go to use Swerve Drive this year. It gives an immediate advantage just being able to position ourselves in any direction, any way on the field. Uh, from there, we kind of just decided, okay, well, if we're using Swerve, let's make it square. So from that point, it was pretty uh, straightforward to do this like center piece with the tube stock uh, and we built the feeder off of that so we tried to use as much space as we could to facilitate the movement as balls through the robot um, so that's why uh, you see this basic frame the way that you do uh, one thing that was interesting is we also wanted to use these really nice uh, telescoping climber climbers and we put our own hooks on the end you can see we got a double hook on it. We found that from our first comp to our second one that a double hook gives you an advantage. And so we went ahead and put it on there. It's just easier to grab onto that traversal rung. And for the intake, it seems like you guys have these uh, mechanism style wheels. Are these just to help the ball center in? Yeah, so uh, when we were testing the intake uh, like a couple weeks ago, we found that a lot of balls were getting stuck uh, right here on the side of the intake where we now have the mechanism wheels. So because it was getting jammed underneath, um, we went ahead and put the mechanism wheels on. We put these little uh, barriers to protect the swerve modules, but also it's more to facilitate the movement of balls and towards the center. And all, you can see also at the top, we have uneven mechanism wheels on this row. And that is also to facilitate uh, you know, moving the balls towards the center. But the reason why they're offset is we also had a problem where two balls were getting trapped in the intake and it wouldn't move backwards. So by having you know uneven uh, direction for each ball, it kind of forces one to push the other straight in to the feeder. And is it possible we can see it in action? Yeah, you want to go ahead and pop it down for us, Colin? All right, and from there, let's let's move over to the shooter. Uh, so, yeah. Ido, you'll be talking about the shooter. Explain your process about the shooter. What, uh, what motors are you guys using? Uh, what wheels are you guys using? Compression, anything like that? Yeah, definitely. So, for the shooter, there were a lot of different variations uh, from the beginning until what we have now uh, to get our shooter working. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the robot, actually. So, the shooter uses uh, these very large uh, neoprene uh, wheels combined with two uh, Falcons to get very high speed up time. Uh, so these are attached on to speed at very, very high speeds to compress and shoot the robot out, uh, shoot the uh, ball out uh, into the upper hub. And so uh, probably as I'm talking, you can see how the angler moves. Uh, so this angler we added in our uh, Irving competition. Uh, and this is aligned using a servo, a very small servo down here. Uh, onto the limelight. So the limelight will send uh, data to the servo and it will angle uh, our shot when we need to and then it will actuate these uh, wheels and shoot it out. All right, that's amazing. And now let's talk about your climber. Uh, what exactly, I know Brian uh, spoke a little bit about the two hooks. 
but can you explain your entire process, how a cycle would go with the climbing during endgame? Yeah, definitely. Uh, with the climber, we're using uh, two different uh, spools. One of them to pivot these uh, large uh, uh, arms here uh, that have hooks on them, double hooks. And these can pivot uh, in and out from the robot to angle themselves, like so, to reach the other rungs, uh, such as the high and the traversal. And then they can extend up and down to reach the desired height. All the way up. And as they pull down, we're using these stationary hooks uh, that have a sort of barbed kind of uh, mechanism in which they can go down, but cannot pull back up. And so this allows us to basically go directly underneath the rung and uh, then latch onto it as it releases. So then we can move on to the next um, rung. Amazing. And now let's head, head over to Colin, who uh, you, you have some automation, uh, I guess, with the angler that uh, Edom talked about previously. So why don't you talk about how exactly the the angler works and how you... Yeah, so uh, I'm the programming lead. So uh, basically, so we have a limelight here. Um, and we use the limelight to calculate the distance to the hub. Uh, and so, uh, for example, if we have a uh, limelight target here, right, we can see uh, this as a reflective target, and our angler right here uh, adjusts so that it, uh, it'll shoot into the hub. And it'll also adjust the RPM, as Ido mentioned earlier, uh, to have it go into the hub as well. Great, this is, this is an amazing robot. Really proud of y'all, as you guys are my former high school team. Um, you guys are also part of the Open Alliance, which yeah. is a great opportunity. Uh, yeah, so this is 5431 Titan Robotics. Again, my former team. Really proud of them and excited to see them in future competitions. Uh, currently ranked sixth in yeah. states right now in the Mercury Division. And yeah, thank you for having us on. Yeah, thank you thank for you having us. Having, yeah, thank you. Thanks to Striker Careers for their support in this video. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.